You've been bullish. Uh, you've been then a little bit pulling back, and now all of a sudden the melt-up has begun something a little bit more concrete. Do you buy into this, or do you see this as a head fake? I, I, I'm on the buy into it uh, side, Lisa. I think that a uh, couple things for me, I think, is at the forefront. You know, we talk about the Fed a minute. I, I think the case for additional Fed tightening is rapidly dissipating. I mean, we, we've brought uh, real GDP growth down to a crawl um, overall. Um, I think there's still downside momentum on growth as we go through the balance of this year. The past tightening policies of money growth slowing, fiscal growth slowing, dollar rising, yields rising is likely to keep real growth sluggish. On top of that, the inflation evidence just continues to get more and more pronounced. I don't know how long it'll take to come down, but clearly the momentum is down well, hold on, a second, uh, Jim. on inflation. I think by September, we're, we're going to see the Fed case for why keep hiking kind of dissipate a little bit. And this I'm is, sorry. no, I, I, mean, I don't mean to interrupt. I, I'm just thinking about what you're saying and that we are seeing increasing evidence that inflation is coming down. The pushback I'm sure that you hear, and you're going to hear it a lot, is not when it comes to rent, not when it comes to food, not when it comes to medical costs, not when it comes to how much you're paying for services. So yes, you are seeing disinflation in some areas, but it's not as broad as many people would like to see. What gives you conviction that we're seeing the beginning of something that is going to broaden out later this year into next? Well, I, I think that having real economic growth, you know, zero to two percent is a, is, a, is a big part of it. Having the past economic policies, they, they have lags, and they're going to continue to be a negative downward force. The reason inflation peaked in the March, April, May period was because a year earlier, fiscal growth peaked, monetary growth peaked, dollars started to rise, yields started to go up. That is about a one-year lag policy has on the economy and inflation, and that lag is going to continue to be negative going forward. Also, you know, you, you can always pick parts of the inflation center that are still hot, but there's a lot of parts that aren't. And, you know, the inflationary thrust of commodities, which was driving this to, at the leading edge, is now a deflationary thrust overall. You know, the core rates of CPI, PPI, PCE have now all decelerated year on year in the last three to four months. Uh, annual wage inflation was 6.5% on a six-month basis at the end of the year. It's now 4 4.7% or 4.3% on one of those, I can't remember, but it's yeah. a big deceleration in a year to date. So I, I think I think the, the debate on inflation has peaked. I think that's over, and now it's a debate on how fast it comes down. Right. And I'm just saying, you, you know, by September meeting, we're going to get more claim numbers that probably will show a little more weakness, and um, I think the case is going to start to go away. But beyond that, th this is really why I'm more bullish. I don't really care what the Fed's going to do because the Fed isn't driving this ship. The, if I look but at what's happening, we're already into a brand new easing cycle right now. But bond, Jim, bond yields from two years to 30 years have already started to ease. The dollars rolled over, it's already started to ease. Junk spreads have gone from over six to under five. They've started to ease. Real money growth's at minus 3.2 percent. It yeah. can't go much lower. I think it's going to start to improve because inflation comes down and fiscal growth has already started to go back okay. to easing. So do you want to miss an easing cycle? Jim, I totally hear you. Yet at the same time, I also hear Federal Reserve officials like Neil Kashkari saying we are nowhere near done. We still have so much tightening left to do because inflation is still very far from our target, even if, yes, it is moderating. Clearly, you aren't in that camp. But as you talk about all of these things that are changing, financial conditions that are easing and the Fed not being in control, does that not mean they are going to be even more aggressive to get that control back? Well, I, I think it's interesting how much attention we devote to the Fed because the Fed's been behind the curve the whole time. Fortunately, inflation's coming down today, not because the Fed lifted the funds rate for the first time in February this year, because monetary growth, fiscal growth, dollar growth, yield growth were tightening all last year, and that's what's bringing the slower yeah. economy and slower inflation. So now, why the Fed's still behind the curve? 
but all the markets are right. going the other way and starting to ease. So why should we continue to give so much dominance to the Federal Reserve? Jim, we had uh, Katie Kaminsky on from MIT here earlier, and it sprawls out to your Iowa State with the rigor of mathematics and the rigor of trend, the rigor of a time series being all when we look at the equity uh, markets. How do we move from what's an obvious short squeeze, futures up 21, Dow futures up 183 two days in a row, to a constructive bull market trend. How do you transition from an obvious short squeeze out to a durable trend? Yeah, I, I think it's a good point, Tom. You know, eventually, to keep this going, we'll, we'll have to decide that we're not going to recess. So that, that, to me, is almost becoming the bigger issue than inflation right now is, are, are we going to recess soon? If we're not going to recess, then I think that gives you a fundamental undertow to your, to your point of giving sustainability. In the short term, though, we're dealing with a lot of bears in the sidelines, a lot of sellers that have come out, and, there, and we're dealing with some uh, technical levels that are right there in front of us right now, the 4200 level, the 4222. And if you break through some of those, then you're going to see right. a lot of the technicians that have been bearish change tune, and that could bring right. some buying in that could sustain could sustain this for a while. So it's if we fail it, you know, then we probably have some downside because it's probably ahead of itself. But if we break through that, then I think you could convert mm -hmm. some bears and bring some sustainability for a period.